So pharmacy as an industry in Canada is in a state of redefinition, and navigating the changes requires understanding of the forces that are at work here. Okay, so let, let's start with a little bit of background. In our current state of operation, by the year 2036, it's estimated that 25% of the population will be 65 years or older, and match that with a 10% reduction in the workforce. What does this mean? It means that the cost will finally outpace revenues and that healthcare system will no longer be sustainable. Actually, it's estimated that by this time, government health spending will equal 100% of total revenues in the majority of Canadian provinces if the most recent 10-year trends continue. Now add to this the fact that already about half of Canadian population, that is, that's more than over 16 million Canadians, live with some chronic condition, and the incidence of this is increasing. And you can see that the healthcare system is in serious trouble. So public spending on the healthcare has risen at an uncomfortably high rate over the past decade. And much like the U.S., Canada definitely will need to have a serious debate in the coming years about the sustainability of its healthcare system. So the question is, how do you balance affordability with sustainability, given that the public per capita spending on healthcare is projected to increase by 58%, which amounts to more than the projected $7,000 per capita per year cost just by the year 2016. So where does pharmacy fit into this? Well, to date, pharmacy is practicing according to a commoditized uh, drug distribution model. Further, we know that due to the unsustainability of the current healthcare model, the government is forced to and will continue to make cuts in spending, while at the same time trying to increase public access to healthcare. For instance, generic drug costs of the top six drugs in Canada recently decreased to 18% that of brand price, and more cuts like this are likely on the horizon. These cutbacks, of course, impact the bottom line of pharmacies and economically stimulate a trend whereby pharmacies a commoditized drug distribution model is pushed to compete on cost alone. Worse yet, the supply of pharmacists is increasing, as pharmacy is the fastest growing healthcare profession in Canada, and this is matched against the declining growth rate of pharmacies due to, and largely in part, the legislative changes as well as the restructuring of the environment. So put together, this translates to an increasingly excess supply of the current pharmacist service and system that has diminished demand, which of course impacts profits for owners and wages for pharmacists. In short, pharmacy is a maturing market in Canada, and despite a strongly growing demand by the public for access to health care. As previously noted, the government needs to improve access to health care while at the same time decrease costs with the primary goal in mind to maintain the sustainability of our health care system. A less expensive way to increase healthcare access means a continuing increased scope for pharmacists and other frontline healthcare professionals, which translates to strong opportunities for first movers who can effectively reorient their business models. But this is just the beginning. Pharmacists occupy spaces that cannot be occupied in efficiency or professional literacy by any other profession. This depiction of what I call, or like to call, the healthcare continuum is siloed in each of the access points shown here. And this translates to economic slack and increased costs to healthcare. The World Health Organization estimates that this may account for up to 40% wastage in the average healthcare system, including Canada. If you look at crossing these barriers and interfacing the various silos between doctors and patients, governments and clinicians, etc., etc., these are rules that best and often already are occupied by pharmacists. The point here is that the pharmacy is a unique and highly versatile skill set that has barely been tapped into or applied. But if pharmacists could identify the opportunities and apply their skills, especially in light of the current need, the opportunities that could await pharmacists are lucrative and are enormous. But this takes a redefinition of the norm, a paradigm shift, if you will. And that requires understanding of the economic imperatives of all the stakeholders in the healthcare system, understanding of the external environments and trends, internal understanding of the competences, and what value can really and effectively be captured. In short, management. Management entails in one form or another the iterative process of analysis of the internal and external environments, planning across the functional levels of business, and unifying and alignment of strategy, understanding how to implement your plans and keep track of progress. All this is in an ongoing and iterative process. Understanding and effectively applying global management principles is critical to the business of pharmacy. So I've been asked many times by different healthcare professionals if management is pertinent to their industry and sector, be it profit or not-for-profit. And my answer is always the same only if you're interested in being sustainable.